when I first graduated, I was really interested in sound and thinking about it almost scientifically. And I thought, if I'm going to create artwork that involves sound and music, then perhaps I need to start off without any. And I visited a place at Bath University, which is an anechoic chamber. And this is a space completely covered on the inside with large, spiky foam. And it absorbs all sound and vibrations within this space. It's quite an extraordinary place to visit. So it's an incredibly quiet space. And uh, scientists and engineers, they use these as a place to test the acoustic properties of objects. And the most amazing thing about visiting an anechoic chamber is that when you go into the space, you can suddenly feel all this pressure in your head. And it's where your eardrums are tightening right up. Your hearing is recalibrating and trying to listen to what's going on out there. Because the space is so quiet, the only thing you can hear in the space is coming from within your own body. You can hear the blood circulating in your eardrums. And there's another high pitch, which apparently is your nervous system singing away as well. What's also extraordinary is that when you leave the anechoic chamber and you come out, you're suddenly bombarded by the sounds of the world. And so I found it really quite difficult to even hold a conversation because my hearing had recalibrated and I was suddenly really distracted by the sound of the, the rain outside or the sound of my own breathing, uh, the sound of footsteps in the distance. So, um, yeah, it was quite something and it took maybe half an hour or an hour to come back to the real world. I was told that you could go into the desert and, and the acoustic properties of a desert are really interesting because, again, the sound is absorbed by all the, uh, the sand dunes and it has an interesting effect on, on acoustic properties. But I, I travelled to Tunisia many years ago and um, was staying in a place called Duz, which is a small town on the edge of the desert in, in the south of Tunisia. And uh, at about three in the morning, as I was laying in my hotel room, I suddenly heard the call to prayer and what was amazing is these these minarets were then beginning to layer up. You could hear these minarets calling people to prayer right across the town. So there was a minaret right on the edge of the town that you could hear, and the, the dust and the heat of the air, the desert air, was absorbing the, the, these sound waves coming towards me. And a few seconds later, another minaret started calling just um, slightly nearby. And after a while, there were about 10 minarets all calling from right around the, the town. It was a very beautiful... Um, experience. It was almost quite sculptural where the, the layers of sound were building on one another to create this sort of internal map in my head of all these different minarets calling from right around the right around the town. It's very beautiful. And when I came back to Bristol, I thought, oh, well maybe I could do something similar. We could, you know, create an artwork to inspire people's imaginations, but we'll do that through sound. And I bumped into a hot air balloonist and the idea came then that we would strap speakers onto hot air balloons and fly over cities in the early morning, uh, playing music to affect people's uh, dreams and to sort of lift them into that space on the edge of sleep uh, with sound. And so that, that's what the Sky Orchestra is. We've got seven balloons with 14 speakers attached. Each balloon plays different parts of the musical score. And then we fly over a city playing this music down into people's bedrooms at six in the morning. It's a lot of fun. And for me, it's almost like kind of graffiti in the sky. You know, I'm, I'm not necessarily asking permission to do this. I'm questioning the ownership of, of empty space, really, and of the acoustic landscape that we find ourselves in. So some artworks, like the Sky Orchestra, are huge and large scale, whereas others are much smaller. Many years ago, I created an engagement ring for my wife. I was looking for a way to put a message onto a ring, and so I ended up working with a vinyl record manufacturer, and we etched my voice, my proposal, onto the outside of a ring, a silver ring. And so you could play back my proposal on a miniature... A record player that I also built as well. So this is how I proposed to my wife with this special talking ring. Um, luckily she said yes, which is great, because by then we'd already had one child. Luna, I love you forever. Marry me. Luna, I love you forever. Marry me. Luna, I love you forever. Marry me. Luna, I love you So for this Get Creative front row activity, all I want you to do is find the quietest place in your house. 
This could be a room at the top of the house. It could be a cupboard. It could be a shed at the bottom of the garden. Go there and for 10 minutes with a piece of paper and a pen, write down everything that you can hear and just list them all. And you might find over time that you'll be able to hear more and more, that your hearing will begin to recalibrate. You might find that the, the pen that you're writing with becomes incredibly loud. You might be able to hear a bird in the distance, uh, a car passing by 100 metres away. You might be able to hear the blood circulating in your eardrum. And I, I suppose for me it's about becoming aware of our senses and also becoming aware of the atmosphere and the environment, the acoustic environment that we're surrounded with all, all the time. Even in the quietest space we can find, there's still sound and vibrations occurring. It's amazing to think that all the objects and surfaces that we're surrounded with are absorbing and reflecting sound all the time. The second challenge is for you to find the most interesting sound in your house and then record it. So this could be uh, a one-off event, you know, it could be the sound of your dog having dreams, perhaps you might be able to hear your dog dreaming, who knows. You could hear, yeah, maybe it's the sound of your husband snoring. Uh, I've got a really nice recording I've just made of an apple crumble coming out of the oven. I think that's lovely. <laughs> 